I was a year ago here in the same place, in the same, same room. Uh, then we spoke about uh, machine learning with Apple, with Swift, with iOS as well. But at that moment, we spoke about uh, image classification. I made image classificator, and I made it in 25 minutes here. Uh, this year, we are uh, talk again about, uh, about the way how do we do that with, with Apple and with Swift. And after that, I will demonstrate how to make a classifier of movements in the air, like Kayleen demonstrated. Okay. Uh, and just a small question. Uh, anybody was here a year ago from, from the crowd? Okay, good, very good. Brand new? Okay. So, uh, additional question. Uh, anyone dealing with Swift? Okay, good. Anyone dealing with uh, machine learning? Everybody's dealing with machine learning today. Okay, very good. Let's, let's start. So we talk about programming language Swift. We are talking about iOS as uh, operating system. And not only iOS, it is about watch OS as well. We are talking about Xcode as a development tool, but not only one. But uh, definitely, it is Apple's development tool, which can be used to make apps like this we are going to see. We are talking about two great frameworks. One is Core ML. Another one is Create ML. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, frameworks, but it is uh, <laughs> like uh, ecosystem. Uh, uh, it, is the, it is about the whole ecosystem for development of uh, machine learning apps with uh, Apple. Okay. Uh, the core ML actually has been published uh, two and a half years ago uh, with the main idea to enable the developer to grab machine learning model to use a small piece of uh, source code to integrate it in the app and get great results. But as I mentioned, it is about a uh, couple lines of code. Um, it is really simple, simple as that. Uh, uh, when we talk uh, about uh, CoreML, we actually talk about uh, the fact that uh, every single model is actually nothing else but a file with millions, billions of, of parameters, of numbers. And, uh, of course, I'm not going to talk about how, uh, how neural networks work. Uh, and, uh, but the, the main reason, main task of CoreML is to take care about performance, about proper usage of hardware, proper usage of uh, proper, proper leverage of CPU, of GPU, and other, all other hardware. Uh, but mostly about using of CPU and especially about GPU, which is the most power, powerful part of, of uh, any computer now. When I say computer, I mean uh, I, the phone as well, of course. Uh, and uh, um, the, one of the, of the most important things about Core ML is that every single app works practically on device without communication to the server. And this is a very important part because, uh, uh, because of security issues. You know, if you don't have communication with the server, if you do not use uh, uh, anything uh, aside of, of the machine, uh, you, will, you will not have security issues related to network. Okay. So everything is privacy friendly. <coughs> let's uh, so let's take a look how how we make app. As I mentioned, we just grab Core ML and we put it in our app. Our app takes parameters, 
as the input, combines with the model and produces the result. Uh, and where are those, all those models coming from? Actually, Apple offered two ways. One was using one of ready-to-use models, ready-to-use prepared. And another one, like uh, MobileNet, SqueezeNet, Place, GoogleNet, ResNet, uh, and others. The second way was to make uh, our own model if we have enough of data. But Apple offered tools. In the beginning, it was Turi. After Turi, Apple made Create ML. I will not talk too much about details today. If anyone is interested in details, tomorrow at 10 o'clock I will have a workshop over there, in the room over there. So please visit. Uh, but uh, uh, let's take a look to this, uh, to this diagram for a short time. So uh, there is a couple of modules inside the whole ecosystem. Uh, like, uh, like Core ML itself, uh, then Vision, Natural Language, and Game Playing Kit. Uh, the, those are kits uh, used for, uh, as, a, as, a, as a prepared uh, models. There is no necessary that we prepare model to use these uh, great, uh, great modules like Vision, like Natural Language, like Gameplay. Uh, but let's say a couple of words about the situation, situation when, we, uh, <clears throat> when we want to make our own model. The first, the most important thing is that we have data, that we uh, enabled collection of data that can be used for making of model uh, that we use to produce uh, all the good things that uh, machine learning can do. So there we come to create ML. Create ML is another framework. At this moment, actually, another tool. Because uh, a year ago, it was a framework. Now it is a tool that uses the, uh, because we have new, new versions of, of uh, create ML. Uh, so, you can have images, text, and tabular data, which can be used to train the model, which you can use to evaluate everything, and if everything is okay, then you produce the final model. This slide was here a year ago. And on the left side, you can see that it is for images, for texts, and for tabular data. This is not accurate fully today, because in the meantime, we get additional options. You will see about that a little bit later. So when we have images, we can relate these images with, uh, with labels with uh, certain probability. Okay? It is the, practically the similar situation with text classification. And uh, it is about and more, we don't have a slide, it is about tabular, tabular data. Okay, so I mentioned about privacy. I do not want to spend too much time. If you want, as I mentioned, please come tomorrow. But, but now what I'm going to show you, it is that we do not have only images, text, and tabular data. Now we have sound and activity uh, models. Now we can use data which are related to sound and related to activities, physical movements, to produce models. <coughs> what is the main common uh, characteristic for sounds and, act and activities? It is, uh, uh, it, it is about so-called time series because Every single input is a function, actually. is a function in, uh, in terms of uh, math, okay? 
So when we talk about sound, you saw always these graphs like this. Okay, when you when we talk about activity, it is about changing the values coming from sensors within the time. Okay, so we are talking now about time series, about changing values in the, within the time. Okay, uh, and um, okay, I will skip this. It's not too much important at the moment. I will jump to what I'm talking today. Sorry. Okay. A uh, few moments more. Sorry. <laughs> it seems that I didn't open the uh, Congress Vienna. Is this Congress Vienna? Okay. Okay, no problem. If I made mistake, I'm going to I'm going to show you the no, <laughs> this is not. I'm sorry. I will show you direct the images, which are definitely prepared here as screenshots. Sorry. Just a moment. You saw this. You saw this as well. But not this. Sorry. Here it is what I wanted to, to show you. Okay, sorry, <laughs> my mistake. Uh, now we are coming to the point. This small device, this is Apple Watch. Of course, this is not the only watch on the market. Uh, as well as iPhone, it has sensors. What type of sensors? A lot of sensors, but for us, important sensors are about movements. It is about accelerometer, then gyroscope, altimeter, and magnetometer. All these sensors are presented of this small device. And all those device returns values in the time, values which are function of the time. This is exactly what we collect as a data. And now, again, I need to open another image. OK. OK. Uh, <coughs> if we say, we can say that we can uh, compare a couple of uh, different uh, types of, of activities. Let's say, like jogging. I will not do the jogging now. OK. Gestures, okay, minus, plus, those are gestures. Uh, playing golf, swimming, gaming, and so on. All those activities uh, have different shapes of, of functions, okay. The graphs look uh, differently, and, but there are uh, very specific patterns in all those activities in all those functions. How does it look like? It looks like like this. I believe. No. Okay. Not like this, but let's say. No. Sorry. I will find it. I opened it. Oh, yeah, here it is. This is what I'm looking for. Okay. So this is the pattern. OK. Uh, let's say about uh, uh, one of, uh, of uh, those, uh, those uh, sensors. Let's say rotation ra rate. We collect information in time. What is happening on the sensor when we are uh, throwing Frisbee, when we are drawing in the air, when we are doing different moves, okay. All this information we can put in the table. I will show you a little bit later how this looks like, this table. And um, uh, it is quite clear, it is a lot of numbers, but when we put all those info, all those data in the create ML, it produces the model, which can be used later to 
compare all those, all those uh, patterns, OK? And to say uh, to the end user what movement has been done, OK? Now, I will show you how, uh, how does it look like the app which collects this information. I will show it directly in Xcode, which is, as I mentioned, the tool for development. You can imagine that this is what I really like to do, much better than to use PowerPoint or Keynote demonstrations. Okay. Just let's wait for a few seconds to see the source code. And uh, if you are not familiar with iOS development yet, OK, I hope you are going to be uh, familiar with Swift later, uh, it doesn't matter. I will just show you the key points in this source code. Uh, I would like that you understand what exactly are we doing. We are, as I mentioned, collecting information from sensors. How are we doing that? There is a very important class named, named, named core CM Motion Manager. And this is the class which is communicating with sensors on watch and iOS. <coughs> Just to mention that uh, uh, practically it is the same approach if we use sensors from iPhone or from iPad or from iWatch. Uh, the result, the numbers are practically the same because the sensors uh, measure the same values. Uh, OK, and this, this uh, class, Motion Manager, reads different types of data. So it reads, OK, I will show you what is reading. It is reading practically rotation and acceleration. I mentioned four. I mentioned altimeter and gyroscope in addition. But for these types of gestures we want to analyze, it is uh, practically enough to use rotation and acceleration. We always can additional uh, data, and it is always good for uh, making of uh, machine learning models, but it is practically enough for that. Uh, one additional important information is this 1.0. And the name of this property is device motion update interval. It means that uh, this program will get uh, readings from sensor uh, in every 100 milliseconds, so 10 times in a second. Uh, it could be faster. It could be slower. Uh, I made this with, <coughs> let's say, this standard interval. But uh, it is always very good to try with smaller, num smaller amount of numbers and with uh, uh, bigger amount of numbers. Uh, it is about uh, testing. It is about checking. It is about uh, uh, research. Uh, so uh, um, if you take uh, the longer interval, uh, you will have lower amount of data, and probably your accuracy will be lower. If you have more, if you have shorter interval, uh, you will have really a lot of data, and the training will uh, uh, take uh, much more time, and uh, accuracy, but accuracy could be better. But you simply can't know this without research. You need to do research. Very good thing is that Apple enabled us through the core ML how to do this research. Uh, how, uh, to, to do the enable that we do this research uh, uh, really quickly without too much overhead. And uh, so practically we have everything what we need with, with CreateML. Okay? And 
I will show you now what is going on when we start this app. Okay, please give me a few seconds to connect my iPhone. Okay. Okay. Just to start the quick time. Yeah, it's not, not a big deal, but I just would like to show you uh, how does it really looks like. How oh, 22 minutes? Okay, very good. And new movie recording coming from iPhone. Oh, I know this guy. Good. Okay. Hope you see this. Very good. And mm -hmm. so acquiring core ML data. Okay. Uh, do not expect to see anything spectacular, but I will show you what I'm doing now. I will click to start and then I will start moving my. Uh, when I do move like this, it collects for two seconds this <laughs> those numbers. But this is big data. This is what we need to train our model. Uh, and for this example, I trained the model for two possible movements. One is this one. The second is uh, this one. Okay. Uh, you can train the model for many other options, of course. The basic idea was, um, for me, was to make a calculator. <laughs> so, but, uh, uh, but I, next time maybe. Okay. But uh, I, I really wanted to demonstrate to you the whole process in this 40 minutes. And uh, I will show you how does it looks like uh, in the file. Okay? And um, this is the content of the file. Mm -hmm. Recognize the move. You see, I have two folders, move minus and move plus. Uh, I didn't take too much samples. I took 20 samples of each. And this is the content of the text edit. Okay, This is the content. As you see, it is a lot of information. The first column is related to, to time. OK, 35, 37, 42, 52. OK, it is about um, 100 milliseconds, as you saw in the source code. Uh, important is that what we are reading uh, rotation ra rate by x, y, and z axis, and acceleration uh, in x, y, and z axis. Okay, so six parameters for each uh, moment of the of the movement. Uh, if you want really accurate results, you really need to make a lot of uh, files like this. Uh, of course, it could be very good if uh, you can uh, do this uh, on smaller or larger space. This is one, and this is minus, okay, small minus or large minus. And, um, but, but never mind. I just, as I said, I just wanted to, to demonstrate how does it, how does it work. Okay. So 
as I mentioned, I have here uh, 16 samples for the training, and I had uh, four samples for the testing. I will show you that. Okay, uh, why is this important? Because when we use create ML, I will show you how does it looks like. When we use create ML, it is important to make a portion of data, which will be the training data, and to make another portion of data, which is going to be testing data. It is very important to test accuracy of our model in the process of making the model. So it is much better to know how accurate is your model when you make it than in final years. And uh, this relation 80-20 is quite common relation in machine learning generally. As I mentioned, I will show you now how is about the tool named CreateML. So this is the tool create ml what is create ml a year ago we had just classes which we could use now we have the whole tool and uh, what happened with my tool create ml okay i going to make a new document now let's talk about tool create ml as I mentioned, we can use this to make a model for image classification, sound classification, uh, movement classific motion classification or movements, text and table type of classification, five general types. Uh, all these types has, uh, uh, has a built-in structure of, of let's say neural networks. It's not only about neural networks, but let's say the background of machine learning. Uh, we can now make a choice if we want to use image classifier or image detector, which are related to images. We can make a choice to make a model for sound recognition, okay? Uh, if you come tomorrow, I will demonstrate you an app which analyzes the, the speech, English speech, of course. Uh, so, and you will, it really works. It's, <laughs> it's 2019 after all. Okay, uh, uh, another type is activity classifier, or motion classifier. There is a text classifier, which can be very, very useful. And uh, we can use standard tabular make the standard tabular recognizers. So we prepare data in a way you already see in, uh, in tables. I used CSV tables, but you, ca you can use JSON tables as well as a standard formats. And uh, I will uh, show you, let's say, uh, let's say motion. Okay, I will not do the training right now. We simply do not have e enough time, but I will, uh, I will say uh, um, moves. Okay, this is the name of the model, and I will create it, and I will just show you that there is the place, name training data, where we can drag and drop the data prepared in files I already show. Uh, the system will create, and it will create the model. It will take a while. Uh, important thing to mention now is that this process uses GPU. Uh, it uses very much of power of, of GPU, and it is highly recommended to use external highly power GPUs if you want a really quick result, results and if you have a lot, really a lot of data. Okay. And now 
I will start the app. Just a second, few seconds to prepare everything. Here is, okay, here is my computer. My <laughs> computer, my iPhone. Okay, I'm starting the recognize moves. Okay, I took start. Okay, okay, move. It is, what is this? It's minus. Let us start again. Okay, okay. Okay, it is plus. If I do something like this, I started. You see this is the plus, but nothing happened. Why is that? Because I didn't train this model for this type of movement. Of course, <laughs> computers are still far, far away from men. There is a lot of things what we can do in future, near, or, or uh, but uh, I believe at this moment, uh, using this technology, it is possible to make apps that can really, that, that can be really, really helpful. Okay. Uh, my final uh, message for this presentation is that uh, Core ML and Create ML are Apple's technologies. Of course, I'm dealing with Apple. I'm Apple trainer, and this is what I do on an everyday basis, and I really like Apple's approach. But there is a lot of uh, great technologies which are not uh, related to Apple you know, as well. But I think that it is a really, really good moment that you try and this is something you can try if you have Mac machine uh, literally today or tomorrow. Uh, the most important thing about accuracy of machine learning models is to uh, do proper research. You need to try and to try and to try. Uh, one important fact about machine learning and neural networks and similar technologies, it's that practically nobody knows what happens inside, what exactly accurately happens inside. But we know that it works. And this is the reason why the whole story requires a lot of research and a lot of confirmation if something works or if something works, works not. Okay. Uh, I believe that it is a good moment for questions. Okay, will I be able to see questions here? Okay, thank you, Milan, so much. First of all, a round of applause for Milan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. No, I did not. First, did you pre-process? Which question are we doing? Uh, okay, sorry. The <laughs> so first one. Let's well, the one. Okay. Did you pre-process the sample? <laughs> Bottom down. Uh, top filtering down. Top because down. of the noise. Okay, uh, no, I didn't. I just used the info from, from the, the sensor. Uh, I just wanted to do it, do it uh, in, a, in, a, in a plain way. But if you would like to make uh, the calculator, you know, with uh, 10 or 20 uh, possible options, I believe you will need to do a lot of filtering and a lot of preparation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so are we getting more questions? Please don't forget that even if you don't yourself have some questions, log in so that you can, bot, you can vote up questions that you would like to be really asked. Uh, is the same approach what Apple does for activity detection? Yes, exactly. This is the Apple's approach. Yes, what I, what I actually did. Uh, uh, you can find uh, uh, original Apple, Apple's presentation about this topic where the girl from Apple demonstrates the movements uh, in using Frisbee. I uh, wanted to do something else, and this is, uh, and this is, what, <laughs> this is what they show. As I mentioned, I had only two possible choices. In real examples, 
uh, it is very important to add additional um, to add additional data which will cover uh, non uh, moves the, that we are not interested in. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So next question: What do I need to start training my iWatch myself? What do I need uh, to do? What do, you, what do I need to start? You need uh, uh, iWatch uh, <laughs> at the <laughs> beginning, at the first. Okay, I will. Okay, I will give you my. No, I will not. I'm kidding. Uh, so okay, but I need new version. Definitely, it's, it's number three, but it still works. Everything still works. Uh, you need to know Swift. Okay, first of all, first of all, uh, as I mentioned, I am Apple trainer, and uh, what I like to do is making apps which are native apps using Swift. Uh, this is not the only technology I respect. I respect many other technologies, but at this very moment, I suggest using of Swift and iOS. How do you decide which data will be used for training versus testing? You do, you do not uh, uh, make uh, any decision about that. Uh, <clears throat> the common approach is just to cut 80-20. Uh, or you can use some random generator to make a choice in the relation 80-20. OK. Next question, where do you store data related to specific actions and movements? Uh, in the model, in the model. So uh, all those data mm, processed by CreateML uh, ML has been stored in the model itself. You then add the model into the app, and after that, this model is the part of the app. Of course, it is possible with some programming to eventually to download the model uh, once from the server and to have it on your device. OK, last question. Where do you see the usage of this technique? You mentioned calculator. Okay. What are some other ideas that maybe somebody would like to develop? Uh, OK, I spoke uh, a lot of times with people what, uh, what could be ideas. Uh, it could be for sports, for analyzing of sports movement, the quality of sports movement. Uh, additionally, it can be used for remote controlling of IoT devices like, like robots. Let's imagine that we have a robot over there, and if I move hand like this, the robot could be uh, could move the hand, <laughs> okay, as, as we want. Yeah, say <laughs> hi or, or or sort of. Of course, it is uh, it is future, <laughs> not so close future, because it opens a lot of additional questions. But um, I believe that there is a lot of lot of potential, lot of potential um, applications, and uh, uh, be open, be open, and try. Perfect. Thank so you thank, you uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody, and. Also